Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I continue talking about circles, theorems about circles, and uh, I would like to present to you the lecture uh, where a little bit more difficult one or two theorems will be proven. So, out of whatever number of theorems I have, five, I think one or two will be a little bit more difficult. That's why I decided to call this lecture theorems, this is number two of this type, rather than mini-theorems. Now, it's very important uh, for you to spend some time before you actually listen to this lecture. Um, it's very important for you to be prepared for whatever is, is there. Uh, simple problems are simple, that's okay, but more difficult problems, they require certain concentration. Try to prove all the, pro uh, all the uh, theorems presented in any lecture, actually, yourself first before you listen to the lecture. It will be much more interesting for you to listen to whatever I'm saying. You will understand it better. And again, the whole purpose of this process of education which I'm trying to uh, impose on you is uh, to develop your creativity, your own analytical thinking. That's why you don't really have to maybe uh, listen and remember whatever I'm saying. That's not very interesting and you won't actually use it anyway in your future. What's important is to prove it yourself first, and then listen to whatever I'm saying. All right. Anyway, without further ado, let me just stop. In a circle with a center O, given a diameter AB and chord AM, sharing an end point with diameter. Okay, got it. So, there is a diameter AB. and chord M, A, M. Okay, B, A, M is 30 degrees. That's given. At end point of a chord M in the circle, draw a tangent. Tangent. Which intersects the diameter at point N. Prove that triangle AMN is isosceles. All right. Well, let's just think about it. Let's connect the tangency point M with the center. As we know, this is the right angle. Now, angle MAB is inscribed, supported by this particular arc, MB. Angle MOB is central, which is supported by the same arc, which means it's twice as big, which means this is 60 degrees. Now, if this is 60 and this is 90, this remains to be 30, because OMN is right triangle. 60 degree, 90 degree, 100, supposed to be uh, 180 in sum, so this is 30. Now, since this is 30, AMN triangle has two angles congruent to each other, which means the corresponding sides are also congruent, and triangle is isosceles. Simple. Given a circle with a center at point O, point P outside, and two tangents with points A and B. All right, so we have a circle. We have two tangents, one and two, from point P. Now, these are obviously perpendiculars, A and B. All right, uh, BC is a diameter, so this is diameter. BC is a diameter. All right. Prove that segments AC and OP are parallel. AC and OP 
or parallel. Okay. Um, all right. Actually, it's very similar to the previous theorem. Uh, look at the uh, look at triangles AOP and BOP. They are congruent, obviously. They are both right triangles. They have shared hypotenuse, and these uh, two radiuses are cacheting. So, triangles are congruent, which means these two angles are congruent too. So each of them is half of a central AOB angle. So central angle OB, which is supported by this arc, is twice as big as each one of these two guys. This is bisector, if you wish. Now, at the same time, angle ACB is also supported by the same arc as AOB, but this is inscribed angle, so it's equal to half of it, half of a central. So POB is equal to half of this central angle, and ACB is also equal to half of this central angle. So they are congruent to each other. Now, consider AC and OP two lines. CO is uh, CB, whatever, is uh, transversal. So these two angles, this and this, are corresponding angles, and since they are congruent, lines are parallel. Easy. Now, this is an example in the previous of theorems which you definitely have to be able to do yourself without much thinking. I mean, that should go really very quickly. Next. Two circles are intersecting at points A and B. A and B. Okay. Uh, from point A, draw two diameters, AM and AN. Okay, prove that segment MN is passing point B. What I'm going to prove is that the, if I connect M to B and then B to N, then angle MBN is equal to 180 degrees. That's what I'm going to prove. That's why these two segments make up one straight line. And since there's only one line which connects two points M and N, this is the line which is actually going through B. Now, how can I prove that the angle MBN is equal to 180 degrees? Actually, it's very simple. I mean, if you connect A to B, angle ABM is right angle because it's supported by half a circle. Same thing with angle ABN is also right angle because it's supported by this half a circle. So 90 plus 90 is 180 degrees, so ABN is an angle which is 180 degrees, which means ABN is straight line. And incidentally, we just proved that AB, the line which connects two points of intersection, is perpendicular to this segment MN. Consider triangle ABC inscribed into a circle. Okay, so okay, let's start with a circle and triangle. ABC. Okay, point P between B and C. Draw perpendiculars. All right, let me 
use a different color. So this is a perpendicular to one, and this is perpendicular to another. Um, point K is a B and point M is on AC. Okay, now prove that angle B P C and KPM are congruent. Okay, I think my drawing is not really too good, so let me just change it slightly. Because on my drawing, they are definitely try to be more precise, but for this reason I probably choose another point would be better, let's say P. So if I will draw a perpendicular to this point, okay, and to this This is K. And this is M. Okay. Once more. And I need one more color. We connect B B. Okay. Now, the theorem says that brown angle is supposed to be equal to a purple angle. Now it's quite visible. So, um, KPM should be equal to BPC in size, in measure. All right, how can we prove it? Actually, the proof is much faster than drawing. <laughs> Um, look at the quadrangle A, B, P, C. It's inscribed into a circle, and as you know, um, inscribed quadrangle has a property that opposite angles in sum equal to 180 degree. Why? Because these are two inscribed angles, A, A, uh, B, A, C, and B, P, C, two inscribed angles, and some of them is supported by this arc plus this arc, which is the whole circle, and uh, they are inscribed, so it's half of the 360, which means 180. All right, so angle BPC, which I use the letter alpha, and angle KPM, I will use the letter B. So, as you see, angle alpha alpha plus gamma is equal to 180 degrees, right? Because A, B, P, C is inscribed. Now, if you consider a KPM, it's also inscribable uh, quadrangle because a KP is 90 degrees, a MP is also 90 degrees because these are two perpendiculars. So sum of opposite angles is 180. Therefore, sum of other opposite angles, which is gamma and beta, or beta and gamma. 
also 180 degrees. Because the sum of all angles in a convex uh, quadrangle, as you know, is equal to 360 degrees. So, well, that's basically it. I mean, this is the end of the proof. Obviously, alpha is equal to beta. And that's what's necessary to prove in this particular problem. That's it. Now, the next problem is slightly more difficult. And actually, this is the beginning of the proof for the next problem. So what's the next problem? That's quite interesting. I will use the same drawing. Uh, but I will also add another perpendicular, the perpendicular to a third side. So we have perpendicular to AB, perpendicular to AC, and I will continue with a perpendicular to uh, side BC. Oh. So, the next theorem states that these three points, K, L, and M, are lying on the same line, one straight line, which is called uh, a Simpson line. Actually, it's, apparently there was a person called Simpson. Actually, there are some other people who proved this particular theorem. And uh, this is one of the theorems which doesn't seem to be obvious, one of those. Uh, three perpendiculars and three sides of any triangle uh, from any point on the circle, uh, which is not a vertex. All these three bases of the three perpendiculars are supposed to lie on the same line. Not very obvious, but it's not very difficult to prove using whatever we have just proven before. Because, let's think about this way. How can you prove that the K, L, and M are lying on the same line? Well, let's just connect um, let's just connect K and L and L and M. If I will prove that angles B, L, K and MLC are congruent, well, BC is a line, so if these two angles are congruent, then KLM would be also 180 degrees, right? That's easy to prove. So we have to prove that these two angles are congruent. Well, let's think about this way. Angle B, L, K. So we have to prove that angle B, L, K is congruent to angle M, L, C. Okay. That we have to prove. Now, how can we do this? Okay. Think about it this way. Consider B, P as a hypotenuse of two triangles, B, L, P and B, K, P. These are two right triangles, obviously, because these are perpendiculars. So BP is a common hypotenuse. So if we will use hypotenuse as a diameter, points B, L, P, and K will be on the same circle. And look at this angle B, L, K, which we have to really prove that it's equal to this one. It's supported by the same arc B, K as angle B, P, K. Right? Again, B, L, K, and B, P, K in this circle are supported by the same arc. That's why they are congruent. So we can say that this angle is congruent to this angle. So, so far we have proven that this is B, P, K. Okay. Now, very similarly, if you use BPC 
as a diameter then PMC is the right triangle with this hypotenuse and PLC is the right triangle with this hypotenuse which means PLM and C are lying in the same circle and angles MLC is supported by the same arc as MPC. MPC. So this angle is the same as this angle. <coughs> now, we have already proven that alpha and beta are the same. So this is also alpha. The purple and the brown, they're both alpha. They're the same. But now let's think about this way. What is angle M P C this one angle MPC you can say that this is B P C minus B P M so again MPC is equal to MPC is equal to BPC minus BPM. Right? So this angle, it's this angle minus this angle. M PC is equal to BPC minus BPM. Okay. Now, very similarly, this angle, BPK, is equal to MPK minus same BPM. Again, BPK is equal to MPK minus BPM, MPD, whatever. But this M, uh, MPK, MPK is this brown alpha. Now, angle BPC is purple alpha. Right? So, as you see from alpha, we subtract the same angle in both cases, which means this angle is equal to this angle. BPK and MPC. But BPK is this and MPC is this, that's why we have proven the equality of these two measures. Well, that's it, that's the end of the proof. It's a little bit more complex than the others, and again, that's why I called this particular lecture theorems. I wanted to come up with this particular um, uh, this particular theorem. Um, to tell you the truth, I was actually thinking for for a day or so before I have proven this myself. Um, I didn't read this proof. I mean, I'm sure there are some other better proofs or whatever. But anyway, this is one of the proofs, and. Uh, I wanted to prove it myself, and that's exactly what I would like you to, to do um, uh, with all these theorems, uh, whatever I'm presenting. It's very, very important for you to spend time and to start thinking about all these theorems and how to prove them yourself first. And then listen to my, to my lecture. You will just confirm that you are right, or you might actually come up with a better solution than I do.
All right, good luck. And uh, don't forget, unizor.com is the website where all this is presented. And especially for teachers and supervisors and parents who would like to control the educational process of their children, um, this site um, enables you to basically enroll your students into particular uh, courses or programs. Um, you can uh, ask them to go through exams. You can uh, check the results of the exams. And uh, you are in control basically by saying, okay, this is got good results and uh, consider this particular course completed or do it again, go through lectures again, through exercises and, <clears throat> and then do exam again. So it's very much for this type of, um, well, homeschooling or group schooling if you wish. Um, and uh, whatever the material is presented is significantly different than traditionally presented in many schools. Uh, because, again, I'm putting a, a very strong emphasis on problems and solving the problems. Because I think that's the only thing which is actually you will need in your, in your future. Ability to solve problems. Uh, all these facts about uh, mathematics, about theorems, whatever else, it, they will not be actually used by, by the real, you know, in real life. Very, very rarely. But ability to, uh, to analytically thinking that, that's exactly what I would like to develop. This is the brain exercise. That's the most important part of it. All right, good luck, thank you very much.